Hello, I'm Stephen Cook with Cook Saw Manufacturing. We're here on uh, February the 22nd, 2018. Just a beautiful, uh, warm spring day here in South Alabama and unseasonably warm, so we're enjoying the, the sunshine. I uh, want to talk uh, and do just a little short video about uh, tensioning for your belt. Um, Sometimes people don't know quite how tight to put the tension and we'll talk about it kind of for everybody's meal and then show you what we do on our meal. Uh, of course, uh, for whatever machine you've got, try to look at your manufacturer's uh, specifications and go by that. Uh, but we've got a, a little, uh, they call it a cricket, a little gauge that you can gauge uh, the, the, how much flex is in the belt essentially and it has a poundage reader, uh, inexpensive little gauge and to kind of give you an idea if you're putting enough tension on it. It's important to put the right tension on it because if not you're getting slippage which will cause your belt to, uh, to go up and down. You don't want to get it way over tight so that you're stretching your belt off but you'd rather be too tight than not tight enough we found. If, if it's slipping it also crystallizes the belt and can cause chunks to come out uh, faster than normal so being too loose is worse than, than uh, being too tight really. If you, if you go way too tight then you can damage shafts and things as well but uh, generally speaking a little bit tight, too tight is better than not tight enough. On ours we use a, a pivot arm here that brings up an idler pulley on the other side and uh, you want that to be good and firm. You don't want it just flop down. Uh, maybe about a 20 pound pull, 15 to 20 pound pull on ours. We'll tension that up um, just from a feel here. And we have an adjustment uh, that, that's real simple to, to tighten that up if, if your belt does stretch over time. So we engage this and then uh, we'll use this little, we'll get a close up of this gauge probably here in a little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna climb up on our mill here and try to do this in such a situation that you can see what I'm doing. What you can do with the instructions on this little uh, cricket uh, measuring gauge, you measure from, from the center of the pulley to the center of the pulley and, uh, and we're about 36 inches, but 12, 16 inches, somewhere near the middle. You just put this in place and they have a little strap there you can put it on your finger but, but you can also just take it and sit it in there and press down. You kind of have to press in the direction uh, of, the, uh, of this little black uh, lever that moves and that's what gives your gauge but you press down on that and kind of press in that direction and you put your finger on where, where the top is and this is showing about um, 90 pounds. Uh, yeah, about 90 pounds is where that's coming up to. And so uh, we would probably put just a little more tension on this long of a belt on our AC36 mill. Uh, we like it a little over 100, 100, 110 pounds. If I press it by hand, you can see a little bit of movement. Uh, so you can kind of tell that, but you don't want that thing real floppy at all. And when it's running, you don't want it flopping. With it engaged, you want it to be nice and snug. So. Uh, that, that should help you out and, and again look at your manufacturer's uh, specifications on this and, uh, and then whichever machine that you're dealing with if it's got two grooves or one groove those kind of things but a little tighter is better than a little loose and once you're running you don't want to see a lot of flop sometimes you can smell it I've, I've been running before and I start smelling a belt and uh, well that's an obvious sign that it's too loose but uh, Anyway, maybe that'll help you out. Having this little gauge can kind of take some of the mystery out of that. And uh, so uh, you, can, you can buy those on Amazon or different places or we have them as well.